Now, one of now when everybody goes to Hampi, they see, yeah, the, it has great temples, great uh, palaces, and all. But one achievement of Vijayanagar Empire, which is not, is not known to many, was the irrigation and water supply network. And this is, I take, is one of the greatest achievements. Why? Because Hampi was in a very rocky region, which doesn't have any water. If you visit Hampi, it's a pretty rocky area. Just the Tungabhadra River is flowing there, but apart from that, there is no water source. And Tungabhadra is also not a perennial river like uh, Ganga. It is like typical rain-fed river. So there was no consistent water supply. And so where was such a big, massive city like Hampi going to get the water from? Where was such a massive city like Hampi going to get water from somewhere? And that was one of the greater Devara's achievement. See, he realized that lack of water, I mean, there was because of the lack of water, it was affecting the farming as well as the, the water supply to Vijayanagar. So here what it is, the first thing what he did was, across the Tungabhadra Dam, he built a huge dam. He had the foresight to see that, you know, the storing the water. So he built a pretty huge dam across the Tungabhadra River. And, you know, like he got elephants to transport the boulders, put them across the Tungabhadra River and build a barrage and that helped to store the water. It helped to irrigate the fields. I mean, this was something pretty visionary, I mean, pretty visionary in, it was pretty visionary in those times. Looking at storing water, conserving it. And like I told you, you can see the picture, like these are some of the canals that were in use. You can see the picture here. These are some of the canals that were in use during Vijayanagar time that carried the water right into Hampi. Okay. And other, other major problem was the drinking water. Now, Vijayana, Hampi was like in a rocky, pretty rocky location, completely surrounded by boulders and all. Water had to be brought to Hampi. To, to satisfy the needs of its people, you had to bring water from the lakes and the rivers to Hampi. So, he built a massive aqueduct. I mean, most of these are in ruins. If you can see the picture down, most of these aqueducts are in ruins. I mean, we know about the Roman aqueducts and all that, but... Unfortunately, not much is said about the aqueducts built by the Vijayanagar Empire, which are an equally impressive feat of engineering. So, he built those aqueducts. See, like, Tungabhadra was around 24 kilometers away from Hampi. So, he built those aqueducts, like as you have seen in the picture, that would bring water from the Tungabhadra River to Hampi all the way along, which was like a pretty much a pretty great feat of engineering. This is pretty much a massive, pretty much an impressive feat of engineering. Supplying water to an entire city. And mind you, Hampi was not a small city, it's a massive city. So supplying water to these people in a region which didn't have water supply, which was completely rocky. That was a stupendous feat of engineering. Fine. And what he did was like this during Devraya's time, Hampi emerged or Vijayanagar emerged as one of the largest cities in the world. Because of the regular water supply to Hampi. Vijayanagar, it soon became a flourishing center for trade and commerce. Because of water was coming, people had, you know, people could concentrate on the trade and commerce. And of course, like it helped the farmers around also. Fine. So this is one major achievement of the Vijayanagar Empire. See, this is like one of the major smaller canals. This was the canals inside the city. This was like the canals inside the city, which actually flowed from one home to other home. Outside, like, the pretty much larger canals out here. I'm, I'm not exactly aware of the technical details of the dimension, but see, basically you had the larger canals bringing the water into the city and then they fed it into smaller canals like this. So it was a pretty much a very advanced kind of water supply system that was actually being built out here, as you can see here. Again, unfortunately, again, most of these canals and aqueducts are pretty much in ruins now. So you can just see some traces like this here and there, that's all. Aqueduct is not exactly a canal. It's a canal, but it, the difference is it carries the water above the ground. Your canal is, see, canal is like it's carrying along the ground. So the, the aqueduct is like the, the reason, the Roman aqueducts. You can say a kind of pipeline. And the reason why it the aqueducts are built was Hampi, if you can take, if you take a look at Hampi, it's built on an elevated location. So to bring the water from Tungabhadra River to Hampi, these aqueducts were needed. Yeah, the lifting water, again, there was, uh, they were kind of advanced, they had a kind of gating system. They had a kind of gating system where they, you know, where the water would flow into one, one lock into another lock, and then you know, lifting into the aqueduct. I mean, I'm not that much aware of the technical details in, in that case, but there was that kind of gate lock, locking system or gating system where they used to send the water from one chamber to another chamber, and then you know, put it and lift into the aqueduct and build it along. It was actually not just at Hampi. You know, actually, if you, if you go in in many places in Andhra Pradesh, Telangana now, 
you have many old lakes many lakes and all which are built by the vijayanagar rulers especially in the surrounding area that area called as rayal singha which is a pretty rocky area it's a pretty rocky and dry area you have pretty of these huge tanks which are built by the rulers essentially for saving the water fine 